Hello. <clears throat> Dear mom, do you remember the days when home was like an aquarium? A beautiful sight transparent to the world. Through smiles and affectionate hugs calmly drifting from side to side. A beautiful scene, it was one of a kind. Do you remember the days when candles were blown on birthdays? Confettis always thrown on the hallways. Evenings when you sang songs sending sweet sensation down my spine. Your love for me was as big as a tumor, not aggressive. So let's just call it benign. Do you remember the days when I was drowning in despair? You made me stay calm by dancing your fingers through the ringlets of my hair. You were the apple of my eye. We were a great pair. Your love for me was always going bananas. Crazy love. So crystal clear, I still remember staring at your glittering teeth through the windows of your smile. I remember the days we went for chocolate rides. The days at the beach, I remember the sea tides. The days I spoke about you with pride, that your lips were true and your eyes never lied. Mom, do you remember those hugs that left my skin, tasting the flavor of your perfume? And those tears, those joyful tears that our innocence went through. Mom, are you sure you remember the days when home was like an aquarium? Well, I don't think so. Because in this same aquarium was a shock of a father, a monstrous figure who foolishly, forcibly fused fear, fairness flew further away from this fantastic aquarium. Dada Joseph, a husband who never made you enjoy Mary. Dada Joseph, DJ, he forced you to dance to the tune of his beats. Perhaps his blue eyes failed to see that those tears, those tears that flowed down your cheeks like rivers were not just salt and water but sea. But see, those tears were blood, dripping from the grip of that fist, ripping life from your feeble skin. But how? How couldn't my limbs shield you from those Hitler? Or maybe because this man was more wicked than Adolf Hitler, and it's abysmal how he treated you like a prisoner. Idi Amin, I mean that Joe was too mean. Instead of his love to reach your heart, his whips tore your flesh apart. He changed from a ranger to a beast. I mean from R to beast. Oh ma. Sterling woman. Sterling woman. But you had to settle for his pounds. He knocked you out even before the 12th round. Maybe he was right when he called you a bitch because that man was a hound. And his ears, his ears never heard the sympathy sound. Mom, countless times I watched you bleed. I watched you become light like a paper. And he was a scissors with every encounter cutting you into pieces. You didn't know what peace is. Oh, Jesus, was mom not part of your business? Maybe she wasn't bought with your blood, but with Judas's cases, no wonder she felt betrayed. No wonder she felt betrayed. A woman with skin as pretty as the lotus petals, shamefully, disgracefully, wore wounds and scars like medals. The expansion of her chest no longer led to her laughing. It led to her coughing because she knew that soon she would be laid in the coffin before her soon-to-be-gone eyes whispered her last prayers. They laid deeply in an abyss of tears. And even before I could say amen, mom was swung into a land unknown. Silence suffocated me. The only meaningful explanation running through the streets of my mind at that moment was that maybe, just maybe, her heart stopped beating the walls of her chest so my dad could watch and learn how to stop beating her. I wish, I wish my tears could free her like a kite, but she was still that wreck tangled within the four sides of death. I said I wish my tears could free her like a kite, but she was still that wreck tangled within the four sides of death. I began to ask God questions like, why is this bitter taste of grief moving on my tongue? Why is this cold frost of sorrow wallowing in my lungs? Why do you have to allow death to take away my only source of joy, care, affection, and love? Why do you have to let the fist of a drunkard take all that I have? You know, I was born with a silver spoon in my mouth, but a spoon flew away, so call it a silver bed. 
I watch other people's life like a movie. And I ask God that even to them parties was cinema. Are they bigger than me? Are they bigger than me? This test is so hard for me. This test is so hard for me. In fact, in fact, I brought a chimno one spam. But in the midst of my darkness, a still small voice led me to his word. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 10. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 10. Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. John chapter 14, verse 33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this you will have trouble, but take heart, for you have overcome the world. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Prince of Peace. You know, sometimes, journeying through this Christian thoroughfare may seem so unfair that you may even think that God is in there at times when troubles get closer than your shadow and the route to escape is smaller than narrow. Please, let peace in you and him. Peace is a person presented to us. He died on the cross to deliver us. Yes, I know that life can sometimes be so hard, but we don't need to fight to get a peace of mind. All we have to do is to invite peace to live inside. Peace is for the broken, for the ones who are choking. Peace is for the weary, for the ones who have their hearts heavy. Peace for all is a gift, not only for the fast or the swift. Because in the times of storms, of troubles, only one man, Christ, can stand and say, Peace, be still. So dear mom, I stand here today morphing my wounds into a seductive poetry. I know that your death got my adrenaline pumping. I ran for weeks. My legs were weak. I thought the moment I stopped, the bullet and the trigger would speak. Life after your death isn't as beautiful as the tie and die you wore on Sunday mornings. It's actually horrible. Like the tie and die your death on that cold Thursday night, May 4, 2017. But hey... This piece is not a confused collage of mixed messages. I really mean it when I say rest in peace. Because now, now I live in peace. Alpha Ego.